بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ومولاي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ومولاي يا أبا عبد الله Let us take our hearts to Karbala Let us take our hearts to the lands of Nainawa Soon the Ahl al-Bayt will be entering these lands But on a day just like today Imam al Hussein, who was traveling towards Kufa, is met with news that breaks his heart. First, he is told how Muslim and Hani have been murdered, and how the people of Kufa have deserted him. The tides are turning against Imam Hussein, but the Imam continues on his way. He continues to stand for the truth. The armies start to gather against him. These army men have come a long way and are very thirsty. And the books of history note to us that when seeing this, even though Imam knew they were against him, Imam orders his men to supply them and their horses with water. Ya Mawla, may I be sacrificed for your kindness. Soon, it is time for Dhuhr Salah. The Adhan is given and Hussein comes out dressed in a cloak and a pair of sandals. The Mu'addin recites the Iqama. Hussein turns to Hur and asks, Do you want to lead your followers in prayer? He replies, No, rather you lead and we will pray behind you. Already in the soul of Hur, there is a contradiction. He has come to subdue Hussein, but he knows who is more fit to lead. As the moments were passing, Hur's guilt was building up inside him. which kept increasing at every moment. After the prayers, Hussein and his followers rise and mount their horses. When they try to make their way through, the followers of Hur intercept them. Hussein calls out to Hur, May your mother be deprived of you. What are your intentions? Hur replies, By God, if any other Arab were to say this to me in a situation like yours, I would not hesitate to wish that his mother be deprived of him as well, no matter who this person was. But, by God, your mother cannot be mentioned except in the best of manners. O oh, mother of Hussein, O oh, Fatima al-Zahra, Oh, the one who cried when she was foretold about Karbala. It seems Hur is aware of whose presence he is in. Ya bint Rasulullah. As they continue on their journey, they come to a land where when asked what it is called, after many names given to the Imam, he is told, This is Karbin Wabala. This is the land of Karbala. Imam gets down from his horse and tells everyone this is where they would set up camp, as this is the place where their blood would be shed. Oh, Hur, what have you done? Where have you brought the Imam? On this land, as the day of Ashura is approaching, Hur's heart is in turmoil, his natural fitra eating at him. Can this be the distance between heaven and hell? Hur has finally realized the price of his soul 
and he is not willing to sell it for anything less than paradise. He slowly begins to approach the camp of Imam Hussein in the most humble of ways, ashamed, pleading for forgiveness, with his head hung low like a beggar who approaches their master. He turns to Imam Hussein and cries out, O oh, Abba Abdullah, I am a repentant. Will I be forgiven? Our Imam turns to him with a smile and gently says, Yes, Allah will accept your repentance. O oh, Hur, your Lord is merciful. The doors of forgiveness are open for you even just hours before your death. It was just as Imam Hussein had said to him, You are Hur, a free man, just as your mother named you. You are free in this world and in the life hereafter. On that scorching hot day of Ashura, he fights like one who has sold his soul for the sake of Allah, who has sold his soul for nothing less than the price of paradise. He fights courageously, but there are far too many soldiers. He tells his own cavalry amongst them to join the son of Rasulullah, but they continue to fight against him, and soon he falls to the ground, having changed his destiny, becoming worthy of the handkerchief of Fatima al-Zahra alayha salam. As-salamu ala al-Hussein wa ala Ali ibn al-Hussein wa ala awlaad al-Hussein wa ala ashab al-Hussein حسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين Hussein lives on. Hussein lives on.